let's go on with what we're doing. So we were, we, uh, you know, we probably didn't put out a, a thing. We wanted to start at 8.30 today. I'm, I'm talking, it's Jim Jeffers, um, doing the welcome agenda overview. We start, the first two talks are not going to be hands-on. We're just going to kind of get you in the space of where we are, what our thinking is, what's in the architecture. So James and I are going to kind of give you the overview of what this is all about. And then, um, and then we'll take a little break, make sure that we're ready. Again, a little risk taking here. Some of the systems and the software were just installed yesterday. Uh, we feel pretty good that it's, it's going to work. We're happy with our architecture where it is, but we could have some glitches, so bear with us when we do that. That was uh, part of the, the risk taking. But uh, Michael's going to jump in and, and really get, he's essentially going to do a three day um, you know, beginner's introduction in a couple of hours and get you on hands on and, and really get an overview of everything with some hands on stuff. And uh, he does a great job at that. Um, uh, Tommy will show up and Hans, we're going to do uh, hopefully enhance the vectorization talk of yesterday and uh, show you the importance of vectorization on, on Mike and you'll see why when I go through my talk. Uh, it's pretty critical. Uh, to get full full vectorization uh, leverage in order to leverage the architecture, um, and then uh, again uh, aligning with yesterday some of the the ways to use uh, use memory but won't be identical to, to yesterday. There'll be some stuff about caches. There's also the notion uh, that it is a, a PCI card on a PCI bus, and you have to deal with um, memory and data transfer. So Mike will talk about that um, tomorrow. Look, we set it at 7 a.m. It's Saturday. Um, uh, but we just said it's open lab time. So we, we're up for negotiating that, uh, the start, but uh, we know you might want to spend some time with, with the machines, and again, we don't want to take that off. So we'll talk about that a little bit later um, tonight with, uh, with Neil, but when we looked at what we wanted to achieve, we wanted to at least give the option for people to come in and continue the labs, do some stuff with the machines. Um, but you see, we, have, we do have another 8.30, you know, true start. Uh, Tommy and Glenn, as, uh, as Neil said yesterday, we wanted to kind of give a perspective of somebody who's kind of been in the program. They've been, both been in the program um, in, in the early phases since, um, you know, at least mid-2011 um, and have had access to our SDPs. So they, they're two of the most experienced um, groups with Mike and their supercomputer users, so HPC, um, well-known in the industry. So. Uh, we're going to get some of those experience, let you ask them uh, questions. Um, uh, we're going to focus on uh, MKL. Again, um, I think as Neil said yesterday, uh, libraries are the way to go if you've got them. They're highly tuned, uh, highly, highly vectorized. So we're going to tell you how to leverage our uh, Intel Mac kernel library. Um, and then, uh, you know, MPI is a interesting, um, is obviously key to, uh, to, to cluster-wide supercomputer uh, performance. And uh, there's a variety of approaches on MPI, which you'll, you'll begin to learn today in my talk. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, Glenn from, uh, from Nix and Hans are going to go over some of the, the usage models. And uh, I'll, I'll be very honest, the MPI thing is the one that's um, for demonstration and even hands-on labs. Um, we're still risk-taking and taking some final aspects there. I think the two uh, Intel machines we sent are fully prepared for that. MPI is the last thing that, that TAC is getting up together on their machines. So we'll see where we are tonight uh, with that, uh, getting access. But you'll learn enough about MPI on Mike. And, it's, and if you came in, depending on if you have experiences, and again, uh, I'll move on to my other talk. Um, uh, one of the reasons that we talk about MPI, let alone just being you know, a critical standard, uh, is you operate with MPI you can operate with MPI a little differently than you would, say, a traditional accelerator. And again, you'll very rarely hear me say accelerator. In fact, I, I would get slapped by uh, my, my Intel friends. Uh, we call it a coprocessor. It's paired with Xeon, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, a little bit about the a little bit about the platforms you're going to see. I told you was you know, told you're going to have access to them. Um, I think Michael's first whole world iterates all the cores and threads that you can do on the thing. So where, you know, typically we wouldn't um, say that, and you notice I don't have it on the slide if this went, went out public, um, and we put the slide deck up, uh, we wouldn't. But uh, the platforms that are here local, we have two of them. Um, they're Westmere-based platforms. They have, tw the hosts have 12 cores. They have 24 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. That doesn't make that much sense. These have, have uh, uh, 
a SLES on it. It'll be 11 R uh, Rev 1 or something like that. Um, you know, uh, GNOME desktop environment, Bash shell. You know, you're, you're going to be guided through your, your, um, your usage, so uh, that's not uh, critical. Uh, you'll keep noticing we say, you know, these are pre-production processors. These do not necessarily reflect what we're going to uh, ship. Um, in this case, what I call the standard pre-release environment, uh, this is to juxtapose what I'm going to talk about the TAC environment in a second, um, is uh, you're going to have the same access that any of our, um, uh, any of our um, uh, current partners have uh, to uh, the exact same um, releases of, of software. So by standard pre-release me just means we're through a release cycle um, in, and as you guys know, sometimes there's engineering releases and things, and then we, we validate them, and we, we go through the process every time. So anyway, that, that has the standard environment. Um, I will tell you, verbally, uh, these are 52 core parts, um, and they have 8 gigabytes of memory on these pre-production cards that are in there. Uh, just to mix things up, uh, we have... Uh, the host platform is called the Dell Zeus platform. Uh, that is actually, I'm not sure, maybe become commercially available in the next month, but they're actually starting to ship uh, to tack the, the, uh, the versions that are, are going to be part of Stampede, which is an over 6,000 node environment. I can't even tell you the exact number of nodes there, but it's good we don't have all 6,000. Uh, you know, you won't be able to figure that one out. Um, uh, these are Sandy Bridge processors, so I don't know if you've had access to Sandy Bridge Xeons, but the, the, these will be Sandy Bridge. Uh, they have 32 gigs of RAM. That that's, turns out to be the spec that, um, that TAC wants for their environment. 256 gig hard drive. They're running CentOS, uh, which, is a, uh, which is basically Red Hat um, sort of open sourced. Uh, Re-open sourced again. I don't fully understand that, but... Um, it's uh, binary compatible with that. Uh, so that will give you an idea of we are supporting multiple uh, Linux enterprise uh, SLEs and, uh, and a variety. Uh, we support all the Red Hat 6.0, 6.1, 6.2. Um, you're going to have a, a different environment to engage there. Tommy will tell you about that. Uh, they are already building this, the Stampede sort of um, environment, similar to the one yesterday. You have to allocate a, allocate a node through their uh, management system. Um, uh, this. This is pre-production software. It has a special pre-release that no one outside um, TAC in, in this room and internal Intel have. Um, that won't really impact you. I just want to let you know how lean forward we are about this. It hasn't gone through full validation and everything. Uh, but the teams are obviously moving forward from a base, and, and we, we, we believe it'll work, but you could run into a glitch. Um, these parts, because you'll be able to run the example tests, these parts have 60 cores and eight gig of, eight gig of memory. Um, so, uh, you know, we're showing you that different SKUs are available. Uh, that's capability. But again, that shouldn't be indicative of where we end up. Uh, quickly, recent, annou recent announcements. I already went over this. Xeon Phi uh, is, the, uh, is the product. So Intel Mic is the architecture. That's the ongoing overriding, you know, what is this about? Met, you know, many core technology. Xeon Phi is going to be our, our uh, external brand for marketing the, the product. Um, sorry about all the, the naming. Um, uh, just, you know, where, where did it come from? Uh, Xeon, of course, is our workhorse brand. We don't see that going away anytime soon. Uh, huge majority of applications work best on, on Xeon. When it comes to highly parallel and the direction of highly parallel in the future, highly vectorized, highly parallel codes, that's what the, the brand is. Power performance for highly parallel um, uh, usage. Um, it is within the scope of the Xeon uh, family. And our first version, uh, Knight's Corner, uh, which is the code name, uh, is what we call a coprocessor, as I said. It's paired with, with Xeon. And you can leverage that environment, and we do uh, many times. We don't just leave everything to the, the Phi or everything to Xeon. Uh, they can work in a, a quite a hybrid mode. Uh, at ISC, this is some of the, these things are some of the things that let us be more open than, than we would have been if we did this workshop literally a month ago. Um, we are saying that, that production will, 
production will occur in 2012. And that's basically all I'm going to say about that. We didn't announce a launch date, but we will be at production ready in, in this year. Um, uh, we have specifically said we will have double wide, double wide cards. They will have GDDR5 memory. None of this is probably a shock to anyone, uh, which is the high speed memory that uh, same that's in uh, many GP, GPU style processors. Uh, we'll have active and passive SKUs. That means ones with fans on them, active fans that you would stick in a workstation that doesn't isn't set for, um, uh, for data center use. And then uh, passive heat sink style uh, uh, cards. We're not saying how many different SKUs like that, but we'll at least have those styles. Um, we did demonstrate on a node, uh, basically a node very similar, not identical, but similar to the Zeus node um, uh, that you'll see attack. Uh, we demonstrated at ISC a sustained uh, teraflop for HPL, so HP Linpack on the part. A, uh, at SC12, we had pure DGEM running alone on a card um, at over a teraflop. So the card itself can do DGEM over a teraflop. The, um, you know, HPL with the LU factorization and, and uh, panel usage uh, for that, generally is uh, less efficient than, than that because it's a more com slightly more complicated algorithm. So when you combine the, the two Sandy Bridges and, and the card, uh, we've created an environment where you can sustain um, one, one teraflop. Uh, we use that structure to uh, get a relatively small uh, system internal to Intel on the top 500 list as announced number 150. I believe it was north of about 140 nodes each with one uh, one night's corner, similar to the, the one up there. Uh, the other key thing about that is, is um, it, its, uh, its power efficiency uh, rating was um, second in, in the list in the sense of, uh, you know, power, uh, performance per watt uh, style of power um, to the blue gene systems that many of them that came on first. Um, and then the other thing that really helps us out, and James is totally instrumental in this, is we've actually done public releases of uh, many pieces of, of documentation, including the instruction set, which is unique to uh, KNC, um, the, uh, the source for our Linux operating system, which I'll tell you how it's configured in a second, uh, and drivers, the kernel source, the GPL style. Uh, that is publicly available. James will talk about that. Uh, and then. Uh, the application binary interface because it isn't directly, we have a different one because of the way the instructions are set up. And in, in, fact, um, in fact, we don't have any uh, SSE or AVX on the part. We substituted um, the nice corner in, uh, vector instructions for that. And then uh, performance monitoring, which obviously is important to everyone. James will talk more about that. <coughs> 